Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Back again today is our best friend, friend of ATP and me and our producer, Annie, and everybody in the family, Will Johnson, the founder of Unite America First. Welcome back, Will. Hey, glad to be here, Barry. Let's start off with this insane policy. I mean, you and I have been talking about racism in America for quite some time. I can't believe what United Airlines has done. They have released a new plan that they're going to hire 5,000 new pilots. They're going to send them to their training academy. And half the new pilots that are going to be hired by United have to be women and or people of color. Now, you know, when I'm on a plane and I'm in the back, I don't care what color the pilot is. I don't care if it's a he or she or black, white, midget, tall, fat, thin. I just want the best pilot flying the plane. It's not going to make me feel more secure if I know that a whole bunch of pilots that applied didn't get hired because they had the mistaken problem genetically of being white and male. Remember when Martin Luther King was dreaming about a society in America where it didn't matter what color you were, it mattered how good you were? What happened to that? I mean, are you okay with this policy? I'm not okay with it. It's completely disgusting. They're literally discriminating against white people, specifically white males. They're discriminating against them. How was this possible? Now, if the roles were reversed and they were discriminating against specifically black straight men, would that be an issue? Of course, they would be screaming. They would be screaming. Look, you have criminals committing crimes, and when they get dealt with by the police officers, they're screaming. They're screaming. So this racism by the woke supremacy is, is on full steroids. I mean, what does that have to do with anything? I, and you're right, Barry. When I get on the airplane, I don't go check to see if the pilot is white, black, green, yellow, purple, or blue. I don't care. Long as the person knows how to get the plane off the ground and land safely. That's the most important thing here. People should get hired based on the qualifications, not because of their complexion. My complexion is not a handicap. That's how they're treating it. Doesn't it let you know? I mean, isn't the subtle message here that, yeah, if this is reverse racism, you're right. And we're not going to hire the best pilot. We're going to hire the minority pilot. And we hope they're as good as the people we passed over. But, you know, as long as the planes aren't crashing that much, you'll be fine. I mean, can you imagine getting on a plane, you know, where they kind of greet you at the door and they welcome aboard, sir, welcome aboard, ma'am. And then you say, excuse me, I need to look in the uh, cockpit. Oh, a black guy and a black lady. Okay, I feel better about this flight. Is anybody going to want to do that? No, you know what? If they're doing that, then they, then they have true problems. I don't ever go look to see the pilot. Now, a lot of times when I get off the airplane, when I, when I catch a flight, I get off the airplane. A lot of times you see the pilot standing there saying, you know, thank you, whatever. I would say, hey, thank you. Thank you for, you know, good flight. Thank you. I would say thank you to the pilot and I would walk off. I can't, I don't even pay attention that the pilot was white. I don't pay attention to that. And they're concentrating, they're paying attention to, you know, they're they're skipping over someone who's qualified just because they're white and giving it to someone who tore who who scored less on their test scores? I don't think so. I don't think so. If they're, if the black, if people, if black people are people of color and women, if they're testing less than white males on the, on the, on the test that they're taking, then maybe they should look at the issue of why are their scores less, not just give them the job, look into where the issue is and fix that. Then yeah. that way the qualified person would get the job. Because there's 300 people in the back and you've got their lives in your hand. Yes. Right? And what I care about in the back is, do we take off safely? 
Do we travel safely? Do we land safely? I don't care about the rest. And most people I think would agree with us. So right. speaking about prejudice, the most infamous anti-Semite, maybe in the history of the Congress, certainly in the last few generations, um, Ilhan Omar came out with a really offensive couple of tweets on Yom HaShoah, which is the commemoration of the Nazi Holocaust that killed 6 million Jews simply because they were Jews. And in her tweet, she talked about the Jewish state as wealthy, which is absurd. It's a marginally economically stable country, and they're always short in their budget. And she condemned the fact that the United States sends aid to Israel and that people were complaining that some small amount of money was going from the Biden administration to Palestinian refugees. Now, let me make three comments. Number one, as I mentioned, the economy is growing in Israel, but budgetary wise, they're in a real tight ship. Number two, of all the countries in the world that we do business with for military aid, the one that invests the most amount of money back in the United States, which creates more jobs in the United States and we send them money for is Israel. It's in the military aid contracts. She skipped over that. And number three, the money Biden is sending is not going to refugees. It's going to the Palestinian Authority to pay terrorists who killed Jews. It's called pay for slay. And God bless President Trump for stopping it. And Joe Biden put it back last week. Why is there no outcry to tell Ilhan Omar to shut up? Well, you know, I'll say this. The Ilhan Omars and the Democrat Party, they have been anti-Jewish since day one, since I can always remember. Because every time you had a president come into office, the president would talk about if he is or if he's not going to really concentrate on Israel and be a real ally to Israel. When Obama came into office, Obama kind of like backed away from it. They loved the fact that he did that. He tried to act, you know, being suave and, and trying to act like he's, you know, do just a, just a little bit. But he even meddled into the Israeli election one year. And they all look past that. Ilhan Omar, according to the left, she is doing exactly what they want her to do. They all feel the same way she does. And what, you know what I don't understand, Barry, is that I, when I was in D.C., I talked to a lot of people that were there supporting President Trump that were Jewish. They said, because we're sick and tired of what the Democrats have been doing. The Democrats take advantage of Jewish people, Black people, Asian people, the American people, anyone that they can take advantage of, they do that. And the Democrats are all complicit with it. They do not disagree with attacking the Jewish community this way. They make up lies about the Jewish community. I've been at rallies where the Democrats say that it's the Jewish people going to the Palestinian neighborhood, steal their children, and then they disappear the children and they don't know what's happening to it. And I said, well, that is a total lie because if it was true, the world community would be talking about it. The PBS would be talking about it. All of them would be talking about it, but you don't hear anything because it's not happening. And this, this is total tyranny to any nationality on the planet. Ilhan Omar, she's doing exactly what they want, Barry. That's why they're not saying anything. That's uh, disgusting. Well, you sent me a video um, and it had this chant on it that I, I had to listen to your video like three times. I couldn't believe it. But this chant, every city, every town burn this precinct to the ground. And these people were wanting to burn down all the police stations. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it, what you dug up. What is the motivation with these people? Do Is it BLM and Antifa and they're protesting? Who's their enemy now? It, Trump's gone. Is, it, is the enemy now just people in blue uniforms? Was well, anyone that loves this nation it's anyone that's sticking to the oath that they took. It's anyone that's still saying that the U.S. Constitution is a valid document. That's their enemy. All of us are their enemies. And they're, and that the video talk you're talking about is there's there was an episode just this past weekend again in Portland 
where Antifa and BLM went to an ICE federal building, brocaded the doors with people inside and set the building on fire, literally trying to burn the people inside alive. Where's the mainstream media out on it? They're saying that this is just another peaceful protest, another peaceful riot. It's disgusting. Well, that's like yelling fire in a movie theater. That's not covered by freedom of speech because the freedom of speech guaranteed under the Constitution is outweighed by the panic and possible death you're going to cause. You cannot advocate for violence. It's against the law. But we don't enforce it anymore, Will. Well, they actually do enforce it. They they enforce it to people who get frustrated with these leftists and say that they've had enough with it because there's been enough of that. If give another example, prime example is January the 6th. People showed up there because they're tired. They didn't actually burn the Capitol. You didn't see that take place. They didn't actually attack anyone. You, there was no video footage of that, but people did die because of what took place. Some police officers killed one female police officer died because of complications that he already had, not because people jumped on top of him and killed him. Where in this case, you have Antifa and BLM would take on any opportunity to kill a police officer, be it just a, a police officer in a normal city, town or a federal agent. They don't care. So what's the goal? Anarchy, the destruction of the American system and stability? Well, you know, it kind of reminds me of what took place in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. During that time, the, the Nazis had the brown shirts and they used them to go out and intimidate the people in the nation to get them all to comply and be fearful. Today, the Democrat Party is doing the exact same thing with the domestic terrorists that they have under their control, which is Antifa, BLM, Black Bloc, the Brown Berets, and a few other anti-American groups, the, the MS-13, all of them, they're using them to intimidate the American people and to get the American people to be fearful for a political agenda. And you know what? They're doing a good job of it, Will. Yeah. They really yeah. are. Thanks for coming on today, Will. We sure appreciate it. I want to remind people to go check out Will Johnson at Unite America First on Facebook and at his website. All good stuff. He puts out terrific content. Thanks, Will. And thank you out there in ATP land. I want to remind people that haven't yet subscribed to our text message alert system, please pull out your cell phone, send the message truth, address it to 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. Never charge for content. You'll get all of Will and Barry and everybody at ATP for free. For Will Johnson, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.